for everybody who is joining us virtually as well as those who are in attendance, what I want to do is I want to get a chance to just go through and get everybody's names to make sure I know everybody's names because I, I'm not always perfect. Go for it. Not everybody knows your name. Oh, Trisha. Trisha. Amy. Amy. Natalie. Lisa. Lisa. Um, Shane, I skipped you guys on. I, I skipped the um, peanut gallery on purpose. Yeah, no, see, I didn't know the peanut gallery's name. <laughs> 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 you don't so, know the peanut gallery's name. I am going to give everybody about two more minutes to come in. So just give us an opportunity. Allison signed up. There's a couple people who signed up who's not here. That's why I'm kind of, yeah, I'm trying to give everybody their, their opportunity because I even had a couple people reach out to me on Facebook today and say they were coming. So I really want to give a little bit of leg room. So get this, we're sitting in here today and in walks this woman that's just sitting at the tea. And um, this man comes in behind her. Do, do they identify themselves to you? Hey guys, just to make sure to make sure it, for everybody who's participating, if everybody wants to share a name or a name that I can call you, the reason why we're asking this is it helps with the questions process. Also, it helps us on the back side to make sure that as far as the tech, tech side of making sure everything's paid for, taken care of. It allows us. Um, friendly reminder, if you are joining us uh, via Zoom, if you didn't prepay for the run, you also can send out the payments to the Healing Brew, 1672 at gmail.com. It's the PayPal account for it. And I apologize for those who are in person who has to hear all the techie background stuff as well. So I'm going to get started. Just what, And if people join us, we'll, um, we'll, we'll kind of go from there. Um, a lot of I, I like to start off with a little bit of background about myself, and then we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of class. I started doing herbs pretty much from the time I, as I say, knee high to a sprout. I had my grandmother was dragging, so it was all I was always getting that information one way or the other. So it'd be, hey, you know what? We're going to take this herb. We're going to go home and plant it. And I'd be like, why are we taking mint? Well, you're going to get sick, or you know, one thing or another would come up, and we'd end up taking that herb home. And lo and behold, it was something I needed later on. So we're going to talk a little bit um, uh, more about my background, how I look at plants as we go tonight. Um, what I kind of want to know is, is I just kind of, I guess we're going to we're going to do this three different ways: beginner, intermediate, advanced. I'm going to ask everybody to kind of identify where they feel they're at on the spectrum as far as do you think you're a beginner, do you think you're intermediate, or do you think you're advanced? I'm going to start with Trisha. Somewhere between beginner and intermediate. Like All right. Yeah, probably the same. Same. Um, just say beginner. Just, just say beginner. 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 I'm sorry, a little. I'm like beginner. Oh, beginner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Melissa is a beginner, and Anne is also a beginner. All right, and Mikey and Shane are, and I'm gonna ask you guys to. Yeah. Okay. So. As far as I want to talk a little bit about, you guys are going to get the same information each month. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to give you guys an information sheet so that you guys can kind of jot down information, jot down stuff that you guys want to take home with you at the end of the night. Basically give you guys this like note sheet. It, then that way we're going to kind of break the night up in two parts. The other one is I'm going to give you guys informational sheets that just talk about the, some of the aspects of the plants that we don't always think about. And it just gives us more information to talk about, more information that's valuable, and we'll talk more about it in a second. The other one, and then the other one is, I'm gonna give you guys a journal page just because it's kind of fun. And then I'm gonna try to do recipes and stuff like that, just so you guys can figure out ways to use these herbs. Because one of the biggest things is, we can talk about herbs all night long. We really truly can. Problem is, is that if she needs to eat more stinging nettles, or that's something that will help her, one of the things that's gonna we're gonna run into is those. It's hard to get you to consume something that you really don't like. So yeah, you can try it in tea. That's one way to enjoy it. But if you can do it in a lemonade, if you can do it 
some other way, it's gonna actually make it so much better, so much easier. So I'm gonna give that back to you. I, we're gonna start out with some, I wanna do a little bit of vocabulary. Um, and those of you guys who have done some other classes, I like vocab, not so much that I want you guys to think of the background of like the, like like going back to grade school or anything like that, but I'm sure we all understand like the, the content that we're talking about. First word of the night is gonna be sav. And I'm gonna, and my definition of a sav or salve or an ointment is gonna be uh, an oil combined with a wax that you can use for your skin to use to, for healing purposes and stuff like that. Sure, S-A-L-V-E, salve, yep. And, and salve and ointment, they really are the same thing. The only difference is, is I'm gonna say it's more about the thickness of the two. Uh, ointment's gonna be a little more loose where a salve is gonna be a little thicker. Tincture, an alcohol, a plant that's been soaked in alcohol, vinegar, or glycerin. Tincture, so it's gonna be in alcohol, it's gonna be in vinegar or glycerin. And we'll, we're, we're gonna talk about all the, all the in-depth stuff as we go throughout this, guys. Yes, glycerin's another option. Bye. <laughs> um, wax, it's basically a wax and an oil-based product. No, only if you want to. Uh, this is just so we all can kind of talk, we can understand what's going on. Infusion. That's, another, that, that's the next one. And the easiest way I can explain an infusion, you can look at it as a T, or you can look at it as more of a steeper, more of a, a decoction and more of a heavier product. And the next two are my favorite. And if you guys, if you guys have taken any classes with me, you'll know it. Sterilization. So basically make sure you're sterilizing this stuff. And I'm gonna go right back to my grandma's days. The easiest way to sterilize anything is boiling water. So if, you, if, you're, if you're using something and you need to clean it, boiling water is your best, best friend. And then the, the follow-up on this is botulism. So that, and Mike, uh, I, I, do a, I do a tincture class and Mike is always, a person who will count how many times throughout the night I say the word botulism. So some some I think people. I think I got the time one time. Yep. So the reason being is is that botulism is one of those things that can that can infect even if you're making homemade pickles or if you're doing uh, tomato sauces or any type of canning. Botulism is an easy thing to kind of invade in what you're doing, and there is no way to really tell that the botulism is in there until it's ingested and, and then it can even be deadly. So you, it's really about making sure that you are aware of it. I have two questions. Sure. So a lot of the newer dishwashers have a sterilization option. Would that, would that work? Absolutely, because it will get it up to, it'll get it up to the temp. So we want to get it to 185. That's the magic number. So I, yes, I boil it. I rapid boil my stuff and I take it up to that magic number that you're going to you're going to kill most of that stuff out there it's why we take steak and chicken and everything up to those temps okay so the second question is when you're boiling it how do you dry it to the drainer air dry i know it, but like you want to set it on something else and sterile just you literally take your mason jars and them air uh, i would actually set them um straight up. straight up and let them air dry because what that's going to do is it's going to allow it to to all air air dry out Yep, you, you've just, you've really. I was thinking that when you put them in a strainer, you usually hook down, but those aren't always sterile either. I am going to ask just for everybody who's at home and everything like that, if we can identify ourselves when we're talking for a little bit. So just so that, or at least let me call on you. So that way, when people are listening, it makes it easier for conversations and all that stuff. Um, nature crafting is, and I, and I, and I put it. But basically going outside and wild harvesting, you know what I mean? Going out there, finding products that you may not, that you may not have readily available. And I'm sure I'm gonna get a, with this group of people, I'm sure I'll get a lot of uh, feedback, alcohol. So 
is, does anyone think there's a wrong answer to this, what alcohol you can use to make a tincture? Beer. You can actually, uh, well, you can make singing nettles beer. So, <laughs> yes, there can be a wrong alcohol. I'll say that again, Patty. There has to be a certain percentage in your alcohol. I think it's it, absolutely. Proof. If, if we're preserving this, if, if this is, if we're making a tincture, if we're doing something that has to last for a duration, absolutely. You really want to get it. And I'm going to say Everclear is your better bet. And the closer you can get to 90, 95% of proof, you're going to be better off for any of, for any of this higher type. Proof. Higher proof, the better. It's going to allow that to break down. And there's even, and we'll talk about this at another point, there's even conversations about which you should use. Should you be using alcohol? Should you be using vinegar? Or should you be using glycerin? There's really a big debate. There's, this is actually a big discussion because certain products will break down plant material differently. So if, you, if you're working with something that's more woody, you might be better off using a vinegar because it's going to extract it better versus if you're doing something that's a little lighter, sometimes glycerin is the better answer. And it also depends on, at the end, what you're doing with it and why you're, why you're using it. Um, oil. So the reason why I kind of bring this one up is because if I say you can soak it in oil or anything like that, you're really looking at an oil that is odorless and tasteless. So that's gonna go to canola, that's gonna go to a grapeseed. So does anyone know why I wouldn't tell you to use coconut oil? One, it tastes like it. And it smells like it. it. Exactly. So if we're trying to soak something out in oil, you want a liquid oil at room temp. You want something that is going to stay liquid the entire time. What about Yehovah? <laughs> See, this is what the, this is why I call him to the peanut gallery. So they're here to learn. They're here to educate. They're here to pick up information. But he's also uh, he's also been in a class a time or two. Jehovah is not an oil. Jehovah is actually a plant material that is actually more of a wax, and it actually will not extract as well as as as, as an oil will. So not the same trait that I've been used to infusing vegetable oils and use on my clients. Exactly. You, you, and now if you, it, it would always have to be something that's edible. Exactly. And Jehovah is, ed I mean, Jehovah is edible. You can use it on your skin and stuff like that. But as far as using it as a, to, for the extraction process, I wouldn't use it. It's, it's just not as, it doesn't work as well. You're not going to get as, as, as good of results. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to use the word dosage and I'm putting it out there. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a, a, a med student. I'm none of those things, but the word dosage, we're going to, we're going to talk about off and on just so you guys can kind of talk about it. Contraindications, if there's any medications out there that are kind of those counterparts that are things that you don't, you shouldn't be taking. And believe it or not, I was doing some research today and I found some ones that were kind of surprising. So we'll talk about the herbs. So I use, I, and yes, the word herb, some people, it's any plant that has a medicinal value. And to be honest, a lot of plants out there have a medicinal value. So that's kind of one of those weird words that I just threw in there. Blanch. Everybody know how to blanch? Yep. Exactly. So blanch is one of those words. I don't know if you guys heard it. What you actually do is you're going to actually take the you're going to take boiling water, rapid boiling, take your pro, take your plant, throw it in the water, let it go for eh, 30 to 60 seconds, pull it out, immediately plunge it in ice water. Propagate. Basically, if you can go out into the woods, cut it, and how you can get that to grow at your house. Is it by seed? Is it by root hormones? Is it by soaking it in water? What is the best way to get it to grow? I have botulism on here again, so Mikey can do, um, Ooh, there's two. Um, I have mason jars wrote down. Just know what quality jars you're using. Know what, what product you're using for, the, for all these processes. This is one of those times I would tell you, mason jars are nice because I can boil them. I can microwave them. I can bake them. I can do all those wonderful things. If you start getting into going to using jars that you don't know, you, they may not be able to boil them. You may not be able to bake them. You're, you're gonna have more restrictions to those. Essences. So essences, just like Bach flowers essences, they're actually the vibrational quality of the plant. They, are, they have no scent. All flower essences smell the same. 
It's literally their vibrational quality. That brings me to essential oils. So essential oils are an extracted oil from the plant. They're either done by steam, they're done by chemical to extract the scent of that product, of, of whatever plant we're talking about. They were designed by the perfume, by the body care industry. I do not recommend ingesting them in any shape, any form. I apologize if there's anybody out there who's a terror rep and you want to argue with me. We can, we can have that conversation to the side. Anemic, we're going to talk about that tonight. Basically, it is when your uh, blood, your, your red blood cells are low, low in, yep, and in, in low iron, exactly. Inflammation, arthritis. I want to talk about, uh, so what it takes to be an herbalist. So in the United States, as far as being an herbalist, there really isn't a required class structure for it. So by rights, you can literally set up shop tomorrow morning calling yourself an herbalist. So basically, once you go through, once you know some plant, you can call yourself an herbalist. To this is as a client, you, don't, you need to find someone who's knowledgeable, who, who knows that information. The registered herbalist, and everyone's like, oh, are you a registered herbalist? are actually from the American Herbalist Guild out of Southern America actually Southern United States. And what they do is it's a peer to peer that actually evaluates what you, what you can do in the knowledge base you have. And it's, it's not like you're uh, uh, going to medical school or anything like that. It's literally, they take your body of work and see if it actually has any information that's available. And if they feel that it's valuable to um, present to people, you know what you're talking about. Um, so that was the, those are the, my big ones. And that brings us to our herbs for the night. Um, I'm going to start with, um, let's actually start with stinging nettles. Um, well, actually I just threw a whole bunch of information at you. Any questions, comments, concerns about that point up, up into this point. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about stinging nettles. Um, also, guys, if you are a Zoom participant and you would like to get your product, let us know. You can pick it up at the shop, and I and we'll have it available for you. Um, you you will actually for each class, you'll actually get um, the herbs as as a gem that we'll talk about. So make sure if you are a Zoom participant, you got you can read that information. Stinging nettles is the first one we're gonna talk about. Um, so. And I'm going to look at, so anyone actually had the opportunity to go play in stinging nettles when they were a kid? Yeah. yeah. So stinging nettles are not fun. They, they will, they will welt you up. They feel like you've had, for me, they feel like that you've been have boiling water poured on you and they just, and just never goes away. Um, some people they itch. Um, and that is the nature of, that's, that's what stinging nettles is. Um, and that's one that I, I, you're like, why do we want, how is this valuable? Like it doesn't do anything but tear me up. So a couple things why you'd want to use it. One, there's actually been a lot of study out there. There's a lot of information about people actually using a live stinging nettles and actually using it on their joints. So they'll actually take the plant they'll actually rub it on their, their joints to actually bring that heat to that area. So what that's gonna do is gonna bring blood to that area and actually give it some relief because you're adding heat. It's just like you putting Vicks Vapor Rub, uh, Bengay on your joints. It's that same idea in a natural form. Yes, it would be intense, don't get me wrong. Now, but also too, you could also blend it down if you wanted to add it to something to make it a little bit more mild. Once you take that nettle plant and you cook it, you, once you blanch it, it's 100% edible, all that heat goes away. So all the, that component of that plant that is not edible just goes away. So now it becomes edible. So now you can use it for teas. You can now use it for cooking. You can now use it to eat. 
I wouldn't, I wouldn't make a salad with fresh uh, nettles, but you could absolutely use it some way cooked. Um, Planet is Mars, for those who are interested. So a lot of these are actually very, are, are, once you start realizing what the plant does, a lot of this stuff becomes almost second nature. Um, the planet is Mars. Element is fire, actually. So it's actually a fire uh, item. So we are going to think about it as that fiery element and everything like that. Uh, it's always for healing. It's always about protection because it has that element on it. Because it, it, it has that uh, fiery persona and everything like that. It's going to be used in a lot of protection stuff. I actually burned it in on charcoal tonight. I don't know if anyone noticed it when they walked in. That was actually stinging nettles burning. So I mean, it was. It, I blended it down with some other herbs, but it really does have a little bit of that, almost that herbaceous quality to it. It's actually a, a wonderful to use. That being said. You're, you're using this however you want to use it. The, um, I want to, okay, hold on, backtrack. Let me take a second. Um, we're gonna, I want to, you can use it whole to sprinkle around the house. You're using it to bring in Archangel Michael for all that fire, for all those protection qualities. That being said, we're going to slide way back to medicinal because I, we kind of got away from medicinal. It's great for inflammation. It's good for, really, it's good for, just any kind of detox in the body. It, it's also going to help with, if you have a cold, it's going to help run that engine a little faster. It's also a detoxer. So it's, it's, it's going to fight inflammation and fight inflammation. And the other thing is too, as it's, as it's doing that thing, it's also a diuretic. So it's also pulling out all, all, all that water. Just a little bit. Absolutely. Um, so here, when we take a quick break, I actually did a stinging nettles dip that everybody can try, and we'll 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 give a book report back to the Zoom world. But it, I mean, it really is. I mean, and you wouldn't even realize it's in there. So so now we know we can do a tea with it. You can make a dip with it. You can make a lemonade with it, like we had. You could, so that's also going to help with anemia. It's going to help bringing in more iron for anybody who has, uh, who's anemic, who needs that iron in their system. It also helps with, I also just actually, one of the things I actually found out, it also helps with uterus health. So it also helps maintaining all, all, all the female body parts. So it's not, it's not that kind. <laughs> so anything else I really, and then also two guys, kidney health is the other one. Um, now one of the, so is, so it sounds like it's a great herb, but one of the things I actually found out one, if you're pregnant, you don't want to use it because it's going to help. It, it actually can be abortive. So it actually can help cleanse the uterus. So you wouldn't want to use it in that case. The other thing is it also can also, since it's a diuretic, it also plays with heart medication and also with uh, uh, mood stabilizers. Um, what? <laughs> you didn't have enough of it to worry about. So um, also the other one is if you actually have stinging nettles, you can also use it for a hair wash. You can actually wash your hair with it. It'll actually help uh, pull out the oil and stuff in the hair as well. Questions about stinging nettle? Questions that I did not answer. Z Zodiac would actually be actually Mars, and I'm going to ask uh, that would be Mercury for uh, for Mercury. Ask, we're going to ask Mary to get help us out. Mary Baker uh, for um, the astrology. Mars is ruled by what planet for Zodiac? I know, but for the Zodiac. She's, Mary, you're muted. Mars is the planet. So is that, but it, who's, who's it for the Zodiac? I meant for more for the Zodiac. Aries. The Aries. Aries, thank you. Oh, were you? 
I well, you did uh, very good. I'm going to say chakra is root chakra, and deity is Thor. I'd say green. Green, absolutely green. The gender is male. Gender's male. It, it's definitely a male. It's a male plant. Um, one of the other things that I uh, usable parts is going to be the whole entire plant. The entire plant is usable, roots and all. Uh, the only the cautions that we kind of talked about already. Just, it, just, it, I'm going to say pregnant uh, use would be a big one. So, so female health, I'd be careful on. Especially if, if you have women who are of that age, I would just verify that there's not a chance they could be pregnant. Um, also, I would also, the other follow-up on precautions, if you have any allergies to sing, if you are hyper allergic to stinging nettles, I'd be careful trying to ingest it your first time. Just make sure everything's going good. Um, red is absolutely the color. Well, green's well, it's technically green. Green, but uh, I'm going to say red's in there too because of Mars. I know. I, that's, as soon as you said it, I agreed with it. What was that? Who? Not, not that I know of. So uh, most people, nettles, nettles are an easy one to find. Re if you if you have, I'm gonna say if you have a little bit of woods around your house, odds is you have nettle. Just look for the leaf. The leaf is really easy to spot. Once you get the one, um, I actually get. That's the other reason why I gave you guys the on the stinging nettle sheet. Um, on this one. Sorry, guys. Let me step back over here. On this sheet here, if you look at the um, actual look at the plant, you actually get a really good picture of what the plant looks like. Most of us have it. Most of us have it nearby. We just don't realize it. Um, what is it native to? Native. To, it's really native to to the U.S. It, I mean, it, it's it's real. It, and it, to be honest, it's really really abundant. It, it's everywhere. Ah, just, just other Archangel Michael and stuff like that and protection. Um, same nettle seeds, um, does it have a substitution if you can't find it? Is there a substitute for it? Um, well, we can get there. You, you, uh, we can do substitutions here in a second. Um, and substitutions are going to get interesting. So we, we may have, substitutions may come later. Um, as far as, as far as singing nettles go, we, I just want to also remember that stinging nettle and nettle is the same plant. So sometimes you, you'll hear people go, well, I, well, I drink nettle tea or I drink or, 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 or stinging nettle. It's the one and the two. There is no swap. There is no change on that. They're the exact same product, same plant. And yes, you can purchase them. Actually, you can actually purchase them offline. You can do them as capsules. So you, there's, uh, there's multiple ways that you can kind of use this as a as a dosage or, or however you want to work with them. You can also make a tincture out of it too. Um, questions on singing nettle at this point? About as deep, about as, about as, I want to talk about propagation on it too, guys. So this is a lot of information I'm throwing at people. If this becomes at some point, everyone comes overloaded, just yell at me. You can, if you actually find stinging nettle, it is one of the ones that you can actually hack off at the roots, bring it home, soak it in water, and the roots portion, like the bottoms of it, it, it will actually root out. It, you, it, you can actually use it. You'll, you can do it by water. Do it wear gloves when you Absolutely. That, um, that was actually one of the things I was actually going to mention here in a second is on here, one of the things I was going to say for cautions, definitely handle live, pro, live plants with gloves. Unless you, unless it doesn't bother you, some people it doesn't bother. So. What? 
I'm so harvesting infos really with singing nettles. There's going to be two options as far as harvesting goes. Younger leaves are going to have less heat to them. So if you are going to try to do a salad with them, or you're going to do something crazy with them, the smaller leaves aren't going to have as much of the irritants in them. The older leaves are going to have more of the burrs, and they're going to be a little bit. They're going to get, they're going to rough you up a little bit more. Um, but if you're going to use them for tea or whatever, really you can just kind of take those and do whatever you want, you know, pull, cut them whenever you want, especially if you're drying them, boiling them, it doesn't matter. I do want to remind you, if you're going to go out and wild harvest and you are going to blanch, make sure you do a full on it or it will, it won't take it out. So I'm going to ask Shane to give us five minutes um, for a quick little uh, sample thing. And so if, if you can tell everybody we're going to take a five minute break. They can hear you. I know. If you want to, if you want to do this for folks, yeah. and then and then I'll stop back over. And I'll have Mikey on mute me. All right. Thanks. I was gonna use a little bit of plastic ones. No, I was gonna put them on a big plate so people can just grab one. We can't. It has to be individual. For those who are not here this evening, uh, you um, actually will miss the opportunity to try out the stinging nettles dip. I did actually make the dip for everybody to try. So I'll give you guys an opportunity to try it. If you do have the opportunity to come to class, you are going to have a little extra to be able to see different ways to eat and try stuff. I actually, the uh, lemonade you guys all had actually had stinging nettles in it. So there's really a lot of different one way to use it as a pesto. Um, another one is actually taking the nettles and adding them with mashed potatoes. So really, any substitution for spinach. Oh yeah. So um, really, any way that you're going to use a spinach or parsley, it's it's phenomenal. Uh, I always said that you know, like taking a bake, like parboiling a chicken, and then putting it in a baking dish, and then taking the dip, or putting steaming nettles over it, you know, and then baking it, and then. Absolutely, absolutely. They were even talking. I was. Um, there's a lot of great recipes out there for stinging nettles because I mean, a lot of people have really ate them for centuries. It's just we're just running into some of the stuff now, but everything from soups to um, even um, I. The one I saw was uh, taking the the style dip and actually putting it on bread and putting uh, salmon and then taking fresh herbs and putting on it. So. Oh, absolutely. And especially when you when you actually try it, stinging nettles, if you haven't had it before, is it just tastes green. Um, and it really has that fresh green taste to it. Um, it does taste a little bit like uh, Absolutely. It, it does have that leafy green quality. Um, here with the shop and everything like that, I do, I like to use stinging nettles in a lot of the different teas that I, as an herbal tea base, because it gives you that quality of a green tea without having the caffeine. So you can actually take dandelion, which is the one that we're talking about here in a second, and stinging nettles and kind of pair them together, they really almost almost make you think it's a green tea. Um, I'm trying to make sure I gave you guys all the information. Um, there is no, um, I actually did some other research too, there is no flower essence for stinging nettles. So if somebody ever sits down and wants to create an essence for stinging nettles, uh, let let me know because I'd love to hear more information on it. All right, guys, I am going to ask for some feedback for those who had a chance to try the stinging nettle dip. It really didn't taste like anything other than spinach. It had that, it had that green quality to it. It really, truly did. Feedback, guys. You could taste the green. It was really good. Yes. It was nice and fresh. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, it did, it did taste fresh. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, don't be afraid to, I mean, really don't be afraid to kind of use this in your cooking. I even saw someone uh, saying that um, you could actually swap it out for parsley when you're making like parsley potato, potatoes, uh, even. I didn't um, see that, it, it's similar to dill. And it reminded me of a cross between uh, spinach and dill. Mm -hmm. in yep. Dill. And you could, and they were saying even mixing, uh, even doing like, uh, like doing a blend within like for spaghetti or whatever the case may be just as a way to incorporate it more especially if it's something you know you should be eating right it, it's a way to and once again it's a way to hide that in your food that you don't even realize what what you oh absolutely so with the question i have about like the inflammation all that is that also is that only topical or is it all the above ingestion one of the things we didn't talk about with stinging nettle is is if you are actually ingesting stinging nettle and you have hay fever it it actually is will actually turn back hay fever it will actually give you a, it'll start actually improving the hay fever with you so it's one of those things that will actually you'll actually will not have the ragweed season. You'll, it'll actually help you improve with all that. So there's a lot of good qualities with the, uh, it's looking her face. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's out of the clean plate club. Yeah. I, so I guess right there is, uh, uh the, the that's a testament. Yep. There's more. You have more depth than I have crackers, Jane. So. All right. All right. So the um, we we talked about stinging nettles. If as we go, if you guys have more questions, if this is one of the ones that if you guys want to do a tincture with it, I would. There's a question from uh, Melissa. She's asked, asked if nettle is safe for children. To oh, absolutely, absolutely uh, safe for children to ingest. The only thing I would caution with the nettle with kids is just make sure if you're doing the that they're one not around it while you're handling it. And then the follow up on it is make sure you blanch it really well, because you know what I mean. Unlike an adult, you might you might not. It, it might be a little more is that absolutely? Um, dandelion. We all go outside, and I and I know most of us treat our yards for dandelions like that. So whenever we talk about dandelions, I always like to have a little bit of a conversation. About if you are going to go outside and you're going to wild harvest dandelions, do not get them from your front yard. Don't get them from your neighbor's yard. Do this somewhere that is going to be free. Yeah, pretty much. Make sure it's somewhere that's free of chemicals, somewhere that you know you're not going to run into problems. And so that, and that goes for anything. So you, you wouldn't want to go into a yard where you know somebody's treating. And the other thing is, want to make sure that you know what's in that yard as well. What if they have a dog? What if, you know what I mean? You don't know what you're getting. So once again, <laughs> what? Well, absolutely, <laughs> but. Just a little pee. When you get done boiling, I don't hurt anybody. Right. As long as I don't eat yellow snow. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, guys. So, but. I, I always just, you know, I mean, just kind of know what, you, what, what you're getting yourself in. And Seth brought up a good point. Make sure you do wash it. Make sure you take it home. Give it a good bath. And when you're with, with dandelion, you actually have three aspects that you can actually ingest. So you actually have the bloom, you have the leaf, and then you have the taproot. Uh, Patty said, or goats. I don't have one. Right. Dogs in the yard. Right? Oh, yeah. This is true. I did hand you guys dandelion. Did I skip you? What's the bloom? Did I skip you? I might have skipped you guys. Yeah. Everyone have a dandelion? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, as, a, as a kid, it was like we got paid like a dollar a bag, and that was a lot of money. Well, yeah, my, my grandma used to make uh, little dandelions. Yep, yep. salad, salad. So, well, so okay. I, we're, dandelion is one of those highly used products. I mean, you really it can do a lot. So, first off, I want to work. I'm going to work our way down through the plant because it's kind of the easiest way to do it. So, you have a whole bunch of dandelion heads, dandelion jelly. You can make dandelion head jelly all day long. Really, truly is absolutely amazing. It actually tastes like honey. 
So great if you if you do if you follow basic jelly making recipes, it's an easy one. You can also use those to. <laughs> I'm getting there actually. Did <laughs> yep. Dan, uh, dandelion wine and it was, and, uh, I'm going to say dandelion wine and dandelion beer. Beer, absolutely. And then also any pretty much any spot that you're going to use calendula, you can almost swap in dandelion the the yellow dandelion heads. They're almost an even swap. Could that be a substitute? That would definitely be a substitute. What was it? Calendula. C A L E N D U L A. I knew that. Um, so we have you. you we talked about all the yellow heads and all that stuff. You can also use it to make a yellow uh, ink or dye, since what, some of us already know that information as well. Um, the other, because I don't know if you ever had kids who went outside and rolled around the grass, they absolutely get trashed. They, that yellow never comes out of anything. Um, the, the next one we're gonna talk about the, the, uh, the actual leafy greens. Um, I actually checked Walmart last night. Walmart does not have dandelion greens for sale uh, right now. You might have to check Giant Eagle, but you can actually get them in, in a lot of your lettuce mixes. They, if you, they're phenomenal, they really are. Yep, they're, they're good quality for lettuce. You can really use them, you can wilt them. Um, also, the, they're great for a tonic because it all sports the kidney, the, 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 the diet. The, they used to cook like down south, like in, in West Virginia. Now. They they take dandelion and they cook it with um, what's the thing they call it? Rams. Yep. Has anybody ever heard? Of wild that? garlic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wild garlic. Yeah. And you, you put them together. Yep. That, that's pretty tasty. Um, and it, it's it very absolutely. It, Dandelions, if you've never really ate dandelion, I, I really encourage you to try them. They're, they're good. Um, and you, it, once you, Oh, absolutely. And I'm going to say you don't have to be as aggressive with them as like collard greens or turnip greens. You can almost, almost treat it like spinach. Oh yeah, you can treat them like spinach. I mean, really, truly, it doesn't really matter as far as that goes. Um, and then as you're working down, you also have that tap root, that tap root, you can almost make, you can actually process that and actually use it as coffee. It actually make a good quality coffee mm -hmm. it, once it roasts. It. Right? Yep. It's, it's, it's that root that goes in, you know, goes in, in, in the ground. So not the actual stuff. No, the actual root. The root yeah, the yep. The, um, that root, you, what you actually do is you will actually roast it in the oven and you can actually chop it up and make coffee out of it. It'll actually, it actually has that bitter quality and everything like that. So as far as the, um, as far as the medicinal aspects of this, so we, we, we talked a little bit about using the, you can add it to a, a salve as far as a, to soothe the skin and stuff if you're using the heads. The taproot itself is, it's a tonic. It actually helps with, the kidney, the the um, the gallbladder also helps with the gut health, um, and also acts as a diuretic. And as an, it's another diuretic. It's actually going to help purge the system. Going to get rid of gallstones. It's going to do a whole bunch of, of good stuff. Um, also helps with arthritis, which is one I found out. The other two, the other ones, which I I kind of pulled this for for to share because I was kind of surprised. Um, it treats tons tonsillitis, bladder infections, upset stomach constipation, arthritis pains, and listen to this one. And other conditions. So it's really a plethora of information on this one. Tonsillitis, bladder infections, upset stomach, Arthritis pain. So I like I when I saw that I was really surprised with everything that dandelion and, and really when we look at it in modern day, we really look at dandelions as weeds. And so this is the reason why 
when they brought the seeds with them from Europe because they were using them for medicinal purposes for all these different different ways. I want to say there's. So this is the one that I, this is. I always tell people that time. It's always a good a good thing to be learning and, and, and learning more information about stuff. Because one of the things that I actually found out is we were talking about it being a diuretic. It once again lithium. It actually starts. It starts because you're out of the body. Your medication is going to act react differently. Same with heart medication. Your body's going to react differently because you're pulling more water out of the body, and so that is. So the other thing too is one of the other things I also wanted to kind of talk about is especially when you're when you're talking about I, I talk about diuretic and I talk about water loss and stuff like that and everyone's like, well, why was that something that would be important? Well, one, if you think about it, if you if you have borderline high blood pressure, it's gonna help you lower blood pressure. It's also going to help if you have swelling going on. Absolutely, it's, it's going to help pull out some of that edema. It's going to pull out some of that extra water out of the body to actually help bring that into line. So, I mean, yes, it, it, this is why this is kind of in, I, I use dandelion a lot just kind of as that base herb because it is multifaceted. It does, it offers a lot of different qualities in a lot of different ways. Um, it is masculine. It's also, it, it's also as, it's also seen as air, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, it's seen as air because uh, if you think about it, it's, it's when you blow, absolutely, when you blow the uh, seeds off, it's seen as that air element. Um, and then also it's Jupiter on that one. And then it's also Hecate as far as the deity goes. Chakra, Chakra it, that's going to be, that is going to be solar plexus all day long because of everything that it does down there. And Zodiac. Zodiac, um, it is. Jupiter. So, and we're going to, um, unless, do you know your zodiac, zodiac for Jupiter? No, I'm trying to remember. Mm -hmm. Mary, if you're listening, if you want to give us the zodiac for uh, Jupiter, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Um, Neptune. Neptune. Thank you, Mary. So it's 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 going to be Neptune on the um, zodiac there for you guys. A couple things that um, I we, we're I kind of want to go over to is as far as the dandelion goes. Neptune's a planet. Neptune's a planet. Who as far as zodiac Neptune is which one, Mary? Well, it's, I think you're right on that. I think it's Pisces. I think she's right. Yes, it's Pisces. Thank and you. I'm saying quit putting stuff on the screen. I can't figure out how to mute and unmute myself. I can do it myself. <laughs> it's so Neptune, Neptune and Jupiter are the planets, depending on. Dep yep, it's Pisces. For Zodiac. For Zodiac. So the planet is both Jupiter and Neptune? who you listen to okay. Okay. it's roman greek and all that stuff so it just depends on what mythology you're focusing on. exactly okay. absolutely okay. um so is so the other thing is i, I w this one definitely has um it also has a big huge following as far as flower essence it really truly works for grief it's it's it helps with tense if, if you have if there's a lot of ten, tense things going on it also helps with physical energy, kind of getting things, kind of getting you to, to want to play and getting getting yourself motivated. Um, there is one other thing I wanted to share too that is kind of acts as an affirmation for this one. My dreams are set free, the best in me. My dreams are set free, the best in me. And that goes with the dandelion. That's actually, it's, it talks about, if you kind of think about that, the, um, the seed puffs at the end, really about kind of letting go and, and making that breath and making that. Yep. The dreams are set free. The best in me. Yep. The dreams are set free, comma, the best in me. Um the angels are Raphael and Joe on that one. 
Um, and then also um, it's used for divination, wishes, as well as calling uh, in spirits and loved ones. Jophiel. The um, one of the things as far as like growing dandelions, I know everyone's here going, why would <laughs> I like them too, but there's people that if there's people who like don't want them in their front yard. Um, you definitely can plant them in a garden. They grow, they grow lickety split. They really, truly do. The, um, you can actually, if you find a whole bunch of seed heads, you can, you're welcome. You can go ahead and plant those. The, the things I would remind you is if you don't want dandelions in your yard, make sure you're uh, deadheading and make sure off before. Yep. Yep, absolutely. There is, you really to go to see, I should say once that stem goes up, that goes for any herb really, is you really want to be harvesting before it sets flower, because once it sets flower, all that energy of that plant goes to setting the flowers. Yep. And that's when you, I would use them for tea. I would use them for other sources that not so much as eat edible, not so much eating. I'd use them in different formats. And I want to, I need one of your guys' cheat sheets to make sure I covered all the info. We, we, we kind of talked about harvesting on this one. I would really just really be careful as far as when it comes to the harvesting factor on this, just make sure you're knowing where you're getting them from. Just make sure there's not goats in the yard, dogs in the yard. And if, and if you do know that's where they're coming from, make sure you're, you're doing your due diligence to make sure you're cleaning them up and making sure they're washed. So the backyard safe, <laughs> um, The other thing too, as far as dandelions go that I kind of want to uh, mention is if you've never had dandelion wine, I would, I, it is one of the most, you have to try it. It's wonderful. It um it has it almost has. I'm gonna say it's as good as any Chardonnay. I really want it. I I'd, I'd put it up against your best Chardonnay. It really has that uh, quality to it. There's even people out there who will actually oak cast it or even put oak in it, and it and it it's it's almost exactly like a Chardonnay. And then of course I have to mention my um I'm gonna tell I have to tell a story now. Um so my. My dad gets a phone call from my grandma and she's like, um, I think this cupboard is hanging the wrong way. Can you come down and fix it? What do you mean it's hanging? She, it's, it's just hanging a little funny on the wall. She, my dad's like, oh, it, she, he's like, it's probably because you have too much junk in it. She's like, no, you got to look at it. There's something going on with it. Okay. So a couple weeks later we go down and, and she's in Ashland. So we drove down and now he's going to look at the cupboard. He walks in and the entire cupboard, the door is hanging. And the bottom of this cupboard is like half on and half off. And he's like, what did you do? So story goes is she decided she was going to make dandelion beer. And she, she decided to use bread yeast versus beer yeast. And she was taking all this and making it in mason jars. So she, so she was making it in mason jars. And she, yep. It, it, it actually exploded and there's like shrapnel embedded in the wall and everything else. <laughs> so, and my dad's like, uh, I don't know what you expect me to do with this cupboard at this point. <laughs> so absolutely. Yes. I encourage everybody to try to make dandelion beer and wine. Just make sure you do your homework if you're going to do it. Yeah. If you don't like somebody... The wrong use will help you. <laughs> so, questions on dandelions, lines, guys. I appreciate that too. The one of the um, I, I want to talk about the heads real quick. We really we didn't talk about how to preserve anything this time, and I and I kind of feel obligated to kind of talk about it. Is so if, say if you go outside and you're like, oh my God, I have 5,000 of these yellow, all these dandelion heads that I don't know what to do with them. One, you can dry them out in your oven. Easy peasy, nothing major. The other one is for those who want to know about the drying process, I, and I'm going to talk about it more times than not, so I might as well kind of mention it real quick, 
if, if you want, if you have an electric oven, ignore me for a second. If you have a gas oven, go ahead and turn your oven to the lowest setting possible, like 175, let it get hot. Take whatever you're drying, put on a cookie sheet, stick the cookie sheet in your oven, shut your oven off, prop your door open. Most of your plants will be dry by morning. Any leafy things will be dry by morning. If you have an electric oven, you have to, you have, it's going to be watch your temp, try to keep it on keep warm, or even try to do it on the lowest setting and just kind of peek back in on it from time to time. Um, the dandelion has encourage you to put them in oil. Um, they actually make this very bright, br uh, brilliant yellow oil. You can use it for salves. You can use it in bath water. You can use it even to dye uh, blonde hair to actually give you more of a blonde look at your hair. You can do it before. You can do it raw. Absolutely, it does not matter. The only thing I'm going to the only thing I'm going to caution you on is when you do any type of raw plant in oil, is just make sure one that plant is really, really clean. Really scrub it well. Kind of give it a kind of give it a, a toss or two in water, and then make sure you dry that plant well because anytime you're entering, you're putting a wet plant or a live plant and oil, there's a chance that it can bring in botulism and kind of do some things like that. So you just want to be really careful that you, you do it. I know. So I know I, it's my word. And if you're, if you want, you can even do heat your oil up to 185 and pour it over your plant. If you're worried about it and it'll kill off anything. So. Uh, Mary said to check your messages. She sent you the roller ships. Oh, I appreciate that, Mary. Um, that's that that's that's an easy one to kind of use those those heads and, and I mean we if you really think about it you walk outside you just don't have one dandelion you have you have five hundred you really do and so it's kind of it's at that point it's how can I use these and and kind of be able to maintain it the other thing is too is you can also if you have the leaves you can dry the leaves um, my grandmother actually used to freeze them. So she would blanch them, put them in Ziplocs and freeze them and just enter and just use them as spinach at that point. So, um, as far as cooking with them, I would just use it as spinach substitute. Really, truly it's, oh, oh, absolutely. The, as far as, as far as, and they're going to be a little bit bitter. I'm going to say dandelions tend to be a little bit more bitter than spinach does. So you have to kind of watch them, especially if you get some of the big plants, some of you, you get some of those really, the older ones, they really do have a bitter, they have a bitter, more of a bitter quality to them. Because there's nothing any better than loaded dandelions with some bacon grease. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Throw, yeah, but I'm going to tell you throw a little vinegar on that. But. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to see if there's anything else I want to I, I want to make sure I didn't forget that I need to call, go over. I did not. Oh, actually, I did. This is the one that I did not go over, and, and it's one that I we kind of need to talk about because both of what we were talking about. If you're on blood thinners, both stinging nettles and dandelions are no no go. Only because, well, let's rephrase this. I would not do large amounts of them because they are a blood thinner and they can cause they can cause that blood to thin out. That goes really with any leafy green. Any leafy greens, if you're on a blood thinner, you kind of want to stay away from. What uh, did you say, blood thinners? I did I, oh, I I know I said blood thinner and I might have said warfarin. I might have used the blood. I might have used a name. Oh, okay. okay. That is. Yeah, yeah I, I might have. I might have just did it in passing. Okay. I, I apologize. I did. Okay. I, I and I, and one of the things I did not for anybody who's kind of new to classes with me, um, if you have questions, ask the questions. And also, if you if you if you hear me talking about something, jump in and kind of ask questions about it at that point because otherwise I will get off the subject and then sometimes it's hard for me to get back on it. Don't ask me why. It just happens to me. Anything else? Any other questions? Any other? Any questions on Zoom? Uh, no, Mary just made a comment. She grew up on dandelion salad. Oh yeah. What about tinctures with this? You absolutely you can do tinctures with this. Um, see, 
I see this is when this is so tinctures are I'm going to say are good in a lot of different ways. I don't know if I would do a tincture with either one of these. Now I may do a uh, flavor. I might do a uh, nettle with vinegar and do maybe a, a, a vinegar, a nettle vinegar for salads or something like that. Be, just because it's, it's an easy, these are easy ones to slip in. Right. You know what I mean? Who always is going to school and coming home with, with, with a cold in, in a lot of different ways. And he wouldn't even realize that he's being dosed. It, it's more when you get into some of these herbs that are just horrible right. that, that, I, that I get into more of the tinctures and, and different ways to just kind of get them down in the system. But absolutely, you can tincture these. Okay. You, you really can tincture them. And, it, and the only, once again, if you're using a fresh product, you want to kind of watch, watch your quality on it and stuff like that. Other than that, you're, you're good to go on these. There's really no they're nothing bad. This would also be a time, especially if you want to do the heads, if you do them in a glycerin, there's more, you can use them a couple of different ways. Okay. So, and you can get, you can preserve that color. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Can you use those ingredients for spells? Absolutely. Awesome. We, we, we kind of talked a little bit about intention. The dandelion's more about, I'm going to say more about the I really want to say it's, it's it's more about like the the connection with divination. It, it's more of that direction, mm -hmm. and then as far as like singing nettles, it's more about protection and and keeping things from. I, I'm really gonna say keeping things from coming at you. Is this way to put it? It's it's more about that intention work, and the and also uh, she brought up a good point because a lot of times. This also kind of, when we talk about that stuff, it also kind of helps us on another aspect. So say if she's coming in to talk to me and she might have a lot of grief going on in her life and she, she's, she's depressed from the grief, it might, be, it might be something where dandelion might be something that maybe not something you normally give her, but it might be something that you can add into the tea that you're working with or, or give it to her in that way because it's going to help through that process and it's going to make it, it's, it you're going to take care of that person mind body and spirit because that's what we're really trying to do it's not so much about taking care of oh you know what your knee hurts it's more about what's going on with you what's going on more around you so that way now we can kind of break it down more does that are we kind of so that's one of the, that's one of the things that's my biggest thing is if I'm working with someone, it's what's going on with you. Why, why, what brought you here at this point? Um, I do want to talk a little bit about for those who don't know about tinctures, those who don't know about oils, I kind of want to do a quick little conversation about tinctures and stuff like that. Where I do a whole other class where I, where I always do tinctures and all that stuff. I want to, go over quick basics just so kind so if you decide to go home and you want to make a tincture you at least have some basics okay um one you want to whatever i i'm going to say a mason jar because those are the ones i work with those are the ones i know i'm you're going to take whatever good quality jar you have and actually i'm going to i'm going to do a disappearing act for a second Um, glycerin, Amazon, and we also have vegetable glycerin here at the shop as well. But uh, if you're using it to tincture, I used to get gallons, not gallons, from Amazon. Yeah, I was gonna say, you, you, food grade. yep, everything we're gonna work with is food grade. So no matter what you're doing, you want to be able to ingest it. So if you would not eat it, don't use it. Um, whatever jar, whatever mason jar you want to use, does not matter. Wide mouth. Whatever style, I tend to like the wide jar, the wide mouse, only because I, if I'm, it's multifaceted. I can put more into these jars or I can cram things in here or whatever the case may be. I use them just like this. Go for it. Why can't I use a pretty little wet gooseneck, you know, pretty looking thing? So, you know how everybody has these really pretty jars and, I, and I'm, I'm even going to grab, I'll grab one and eh, that's not going to work for what I want. Absolutely. This will be perfect for us. So see how this neck is on this? This. Absolutely. See how this is, guys? 
how that neck is. What this does, it acts as a problem when it comes to cleaning. So it, you're now, especially if this was a dark if it's glass, what's going to happen is there. You, this could become a breeding ground for botulism, botulism. <laughs> for for all those fun little microbes that could grow up under that edge that you really can't get to. And yeah, you can store stuff in here after the fact, but while you're while you're actually making it, you always want to do something that I can completely get my hand in, I can wipe down, I can clean, I can toss it in the um, actual dishwasher or whatever and get it to actually be clean. Next, whatever plant you're putting in here is going to be, I'm going to say, a quarter of the jar. I would not go over a quarter of a jar. There's a reason behind this. If you go over a quarter of a jar, once you add liquid to it, it's going to start swelling. It's going to eat up all that room. It's going to eat up all that fluid, and it's not going to be able to steep. It really is not. It's not going to be able to have that room to be able to make it to brew. If you go, if you start doing half and three quarters, once you get something that really gets fluffy, it, it won't. It won't hold well. Because if you try to do this with mullen, if you're over half of the mullen, it would end up being a whole jar of mush. That's really it's gonna be mush in a heartbeat. Um, whatever product you want to put in, oil or, or vinegar or alcohol or glycerin, actually, any of them will work. If you're making a tincture, you're gonna use alcohol, or making a salve, or you want to use it oil, whatever oil you're using. Ice cold, do not heat this up at this point. Take your oil, fill it up the rest of the way, or take your, take your liquid and fill it up the rest of the way. I always mark them, label something so you know what your science experiment is, or otherwise you'll be like me and have science experiments. You have no idea what they are. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I, so once you're done with this, put your lid on it. So a couple this becomes a great debate amongst herbalists. Go ahead, speak up. Back, back in the closet. So there are, there are, some people are going to tell you that you want to put this in a dark corner. You want to put this in the back of your cupboard and, and let it sit there for 30 days. I'm not of that mindset. I'm going to tell you to take this and put it in your windowsill. Let the sun get it. Let, let, let the sunlight hit this. The reason why it's actually going to kill microbes, it's going to kill bacteria. Is actually going to keep it safe. Plus moon energy yep, absolutely. And you're also going to charge it with, with sunlight and moonlight and all that other fun stuff. So, and you don't get, and you don't get botulism. This is actually, uh, this one actually right here is actually lavender and oil that I actually have, I've been showing, I've been playing with. And what oil did you? I actually did canola oil. Canola oil? Yep. Because it is, there's no scent to it, and it's a clean oil, and, I, and I've actually got really good results with it. Yes, there's a lot of debate on as far as the quality of canola oil, and I'm going to ignore stuff as she's giving me looks. <laughs> um, and if anybody's ever interested, you can look up rapeseed and canola oil. You can look up rapeseed oil and all that stuff on, online. It's a whole different conversation. But uh, yeah, this has actually been going for about, about a week now. Um, so once you let it go for 30 days, you want to keep it, you know, keep it in your window, whatever, give it a shake. That way you're actually moving it around. And not only that, if you're picking it up, shaking it, you're going to see if something's going wacky with this. So maybe I start seeing it growing. It's starting to turn white or milky. Maybe it's starting to look really odd. I'm going to know what's going on. At, at this point in time, I'm being set up to say to to, to say the word to say the word botulism. So, but that when when you start seeing that milky quality to it, it immediately means it's botulism. It really does. And so I would take this off. I take it, chuck it out. Toss it. Absolutely. So now, take it. Thirty days later, take cheesecloth, squeeze it out. Put it into to clean sterilized jars. Does not and, and I and I I do at that point put them in dark jars. You can lit them up. They'll last for thirty to uh, they'll last 
anywhere for six months to a year without a problem. This jar now, throw it in the dishwasher, clean it, do whatever you want with it. Just make sure that you don't refill this until you actually do the sterilization process. Because you, get you, you, you don't want to get little buggies. Uh, um, Flowers, fl window yep, absolutely. And, and to be honest, I really like that sunny, that sunny window. Plus you also get that heat from the sun coming in to actually help intensify and steep out your herbs and stuff in, in your jars. Um, now we, we, we talked about tinctures kind of I, oil. If you have oil going on, once you take this and you strain it out, cheesecloth is your best friend. If those who do not know where to get cheesecloth, Check your hardware department at Walmart. Um, if not, check your hard, uh, housewares. It's either or. They kind of take bounce it between housewares and hardware. Yeah, they do. But the funny thing is, more people nowadays use it for uh, actually doing uh, wood mill and woodwork than actually using it for actual uh, baking and doing jams and stuff. Um, then once you're done, once you have a clean oil, it's at that point, whatever wax you want to use. And that doesn't matter if it's soy wax, it doesn't matter if it's beeswax, uh, even if you want to use palm wax, whatever wax you want to use that will actually allow this. Yeah, and I'm getting comments from the peanut gallery on the, on the wax choices, but there's a lot of wax choices that you can use. What? Go ahead, Seth. I prefer beeswax. Well, but we also have people who would not prefer beeswax, so I always have to give I have to give options. Um, and then once you actually have this, it I my I'm going to say 50/50 is a good salve. Really, it is is if you use 50 50 wax soy wax, I'd go a little lesser with soy wax is almost almost um, I'm going to say 25 percent um, and 75 percent oil because it tends to get harder. Um, but yeah, it really, it, it works the same way. And that will make a good quality. And then if you wanted to, you can even take this oil and make soap with it. So there's multiple ways that you're able to use it. Uh -huh. Yep, you, what you do is you would strain out all your, you have to strain out all the um, plant material. Yeah, you do because if you don't, it will turn brown. You want to, you want to pull up. If you wanted to infuse herbs, you can just Yep. I was gonna say, yeah, before. Right, exactly. Okay. And with lye and with soap making, if you actually use uh, lye and plants, they turn brown. So you have to be really careful what product you're adding in. Melissa wants to know if after the 30 days you can seal it. Yep, absolutely. You, you, absolutely. you can put it in your, your uh, little tincture jars, your tincture jars, seal it up. You're good to go. Um, the thing is, you can can it. I, I, I wouldn't can tinctures and I wouldn't can... There's really no reason to because it's it's it's, it's gonna last. It's gonna last for three to it, yeah. And if you can it, you're almost you're almost gonna open up yourself up to more problems. Um, I, I really I mean you are because there's 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 more of those things that starts happening when you start canning. Um, uh, and then now if you want to can if you want to make things out of this and do different if you want to start to sterilize or pressurize it or whatever that's a different conversation but i wouldn't be just doing this as far as sterilize as far as canning goes um i does everyone know i know this is probably something good to talk about regardless but if you are making anything and you want to kill germs you want to kill bacteria you want to use about a, about a tablespoon of bleach water to about a, to about two gallons of water to act as a good sterilizer to kind of kill any type of germs, any type of bacteria that is going around. So if you have jars at home and you don't know how long they've been around, you can always give them a duck dunk in there and kind of clean them out, especially if you have some jars that, that look kind of funky. But the boiling will? The boiling will, but the, steril the sterilization, that's another trick for sterilization. Just, a, just one more way to do it. <laughs> 